Welcome, welcome. Shalom. Peace be unto everybody today. Hope you're having a beautiful day today. It's time to come together and honor the Lord Jesus for the finished work of the cross. Amen. So I'm going to say a prayer and get started. Um, let's see. If it is your first time, my name is Julie. And if you want to join in, you might want to get juice, water, cracker, or some bread ready so that you can partake. Okay. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, for Jesus, the precious gift that you've given. Father God, I pray you bless each and every person who gathers here tonight. And Father, that they would receive from Jesus and his broken body and the blood shed at the cross. Thank you, Lord, that you love us and you chose us. We're so grateful to you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Bless this day, Father God, and each and every person that is gathered here. I pray that the Holy Spirit move and motivate and speak to us tonight and guide us in all truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hi, Paula. <laughs> all right, so let's get started. Let's see what the Lord's going to say today. I'm a little drained from the, a picnic earlier, so it was hot all day long over there. It was just hot. So I'm a little bit drained. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Oh boy, yeah, it's been a, a little bit of a moving day for me, but it's okay. Keeping my mind on the good things of the Lord. Okay, um, yes, oh, you're cool. <laughs> okay, individual discouragement and personal growth. Uh, this should be interesting. Oh, tropical storm coming. Oh, oh. Hmm. I think we're getting rain tomorrow, I think. All right, so Exodus 2, 11, When Moses was grown, he went out to his brethren and looked at their burdens. Let me turn this on, I can't see. Moses saw the oppression of his people and felt certain that he was the one to deliver them. And in the righteous indignation of his own spirit, he started to right their wrongs. After he launched his first strike for God and for what was right, God allowed Moses to be driven into empty discouragement, sending him into the desert to feed sheep for 40 years. <clears throat> Ooh. <laughs> At the end of that time, God appeared to Moses and said to him, Bring my people out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go? Hmm. <laughs> That's in Exodus 3, 10 through 11. In the beginning, Moses had realized that he was the one to deliver the people, but he had to be trained and disciplined by God first. He was right in his individual perspective, but he was not in the he was not the person for the work until he had learned true fellowship and oneness with God. We may have the vision of God and a very clear understanding of what God wants. And yet when we start to do it, there comes to us something equivalent to Moses 40 years in the wilderness. <laughs> it's as if God had ignored the entire thing. And when we are thoroughly discouraged, God comes back and revives his call to us. And then we begin to tremble and say, who am I that I should go? We must learn that God's great stride as summed up in these words, I am who I am has sent me to you. Exodus 3.14. We must also learn that our individual effort for God shows nothing but disrespect for him. Our individuality is to be rendered radiant through a personal relationship with God so that he may be well pleased as in Matthew 3:17 we are focused on the right individual perspective of things we have the vision and can say i know this is what god wants me to do but we have not yet learned to get into god's stride if you are going through a time of discouragement there is a time of great personal growth ahead that is for sure so apparently I'm gonna have some growth that's okay I, I, I love it when the Lord is working on me and I'm growing so that's part of it 
we will be discouraged. But he says, be of good cheer. He's overcome the world. Amen. That's right. I wonder where Barbara is. Is she here? It says too. Is Barbara there? Hmm. <laughs> I can't tell. So let's read our wonderful love letter. How is the Lord going to love on us today? Which he loves us all day long. Okay. This is a love letter from our King. Amen. So it says here, My beloved, give me control. I am your king and the ruler of all things. When the wind blows and the waves crash against the sides of your lifeboat, let me steer you to safety. I'm not only the captain of your ship, I can also control the storm. I know you like to feel you're in control by holding on to the wheel with all your strength, but I have your have you and your future under control. Who knows you better than I do? I don't want you to keep exhausting yourself trying to rebuild your life and another shipwreck. That's exactly correct. I am the one who takes what is broken and rebuilds it even better than before. So give your life back to me. I will claim you in the storm. Sorry, I will calm you in the storm or I will clear the rough waters. Either way, you will be safe with me. Love your king who calms the storm. Amen. Well, this goes right well with the teaching we just read. <laughs> And it's encouraging and uplifting. I love the way the Holy Spirit works. Luke 8, 24 is the scripture. It says the disciples woke him up shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. So Jesus rebuked the wind and the raging waves. The storm stopped and all was calm. Amen. And that's what he'll do for us. No matter what storm is a brewing, He's going to calm it all down. Right, Paula? Amen. Amen. All right. So if you're just joining, hit the like and share button. Let's share the love of Jesus, the finished work of the cross, the gospel. Amen. Um, we're going to take communion here shortly. So if you haven't gotten your elements, go ahead and get your juice or your water, your cracker or your bread ready. Hi, Barbara. Um, we're going to say some scriptures here, take in the wonderful word of God, and then we're going to do our communion. All right. All right. Now, God promises that he is an answer to prayer. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> First John 5, 14 through 15. This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. Oh, Lord. Oh, I, I, I claim this scripture tonight. I sure do. He, he hears. That's it. I'm going to tell the Lord about this tonight. This scripture, he's going to answer our prayer. Amen. He's going to answer us whatever we ask. It is his will. It's his will for us to be healthy, whole, full of life vibrant, youthful. It is. Hallelujah. And we expect it, Lord, tonight. We receive that. Amen. <laughs> Hi, angel. <laughs> okay, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Whoa. These are beautiful scriptures for tonight. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Are you seeking the Lord? Because he's a great rewarder of those who are diligently seeking him. Amen. Ooh, and you need faith right now. That's right. Colossians 1, 17 through 18. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Hallelujah. I love that scripture. That's my handwritten scripture. He's so good. Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Thank you, Lord. 
Psalms 55, 22. Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. We're going to do that tonight too. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Amen. John 6, 35. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for your words of encouragement and love. Father God, just engrave these scriptures in our hearts, Lord, that we would be a light to the world, that we could speak into our own being and existence, Lord, to call and speak to those mountains, Thank you, Father God, that you are continuously working in us, that we can come together tonight giving you praise and honor for Jesus, the finished work of the cross. I pray you bless each and every person who's being obedient unto your word, Father God, and that they receive everything that Jesus died to give them. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So if you have your Bible and want to, and want to join along, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 26 is where we'll be reading from. Hi, angel. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So I want to just remind you, the bread is the body. It represents the body of Jesus. What Jesus did for us. We're doing this in remembrance of what he did for us when he died on the cross, when he took the beatings and the lashes on his back. All these things that Jesus did in his suffering and sorrow and all the pain he went through is so that you and I can receive his health and restoration, pro prosperity, wealth, all these good blessings that he died for us to receive. So the, the bread represents his body. We're going to do a divine exchange tonight. So whatever it is you're carrying, drop it at the feet of Jesus at the cross right there and receive all the goodness that Jesus died to give you tonight. Also, the water or juice that you have, this represents the blood of Jesus. It's the sinless blood. His blood is the only one that qualifies for that. So I want to tell you that sinless blood has washed us white as snow for those who are in Christ. Amen. And if you're not, we urge you to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior today. So this blood that Jesus poured out of his body is that blood that makes you holy and righteous, lets us come into the throne of God and give our petitions to him, our prayer requests, and he answers us. Oh, rejoice tonight in that and receive everything that Jesus died to give you. Amen. So let's, let's go ahead and, and read together. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he prayed over the bread. He broke it and passed it amongst the disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we're going to do this tonight in remembrance of what we just talked about. This bread represents his body. And see Jesus being beaten. He was whipped. Many lashes fell upon his back. And you can see that there because Jesus took all that so that you can have his health and healing. He took in all the sicknesses and diseases, the curses. Everything went into Jesus' body so you and I could be made whole. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your broken body. We thank you for bearing our symptoms and sicknesses at the cross so that we may have your health and wholeness. Amen. We declare that by your stripes, by the beatings that you bore, and by the lashes that fell on your back, we are completely healed. We believe and we receive your resurrection life in our bodies today. So let us eat his flesh together. Now likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So you're going to take your juice or your water. You're going to hold that up. And you're going to see Jesus on the cross. See his nail pierced hands and his feet. And the crown of thorns that were beaten into his head. And all the blood that flowed out of Jesus' body is that blood that has redeemed you, made you righteous, holy, acceptable unto Father God. You're forever redeemed and forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood that has washed us whiter than snow. Your blood has brought us forgiveness and has made us righteous forever. And as we drink, we celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which includes preservation, healing, wholeness, and all your blessings. So let us drink his blood together. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and no devil in hell can change my mind of who I am. I know I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. No matter what happens in life, remember Jesus' blood has covered you, and you can walk boldly in life knowing no matter what mistakes you make, no matter what you do, you're forgiven forever forgiven once and for all God is on your side stand firm be courageous amen thank you Jesus for the new identity new creation in Christ amen you're made new he makes all things new glory to God amen well I thank you guys for joining tonight. I love you so much. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I'm going to pray and then close out. We're going to do our prayer warriors here soon. So hopefully you guys can gather and pray together. We need to pray. We are warriors. This is the, this is our battle right now. We need to be praying. <laughs> All right. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the wonderful time that we get to spend with you, Lord, giving you praise, honor, and thanking you for your precious son, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that we have a relationship with you and that you never stop loving us, that you never let us go, that you are holding on to our right hand and you uplift us. When times are discouraging, Lord, you make everything good. You turn it all the way around when we can't see it. We know you're with us. Thank you, Father, for the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. I pray you just bless us all tonight. Holy Spirit, move in us, change us, strengthen our inner man. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. All right, you guys. We'll see you guys in a bit. Be a light into the world. Spread the gospel. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. He's coming. Bye-bye. <laughs>